is Captain Firoz Pasha making a small uh, informative and educational video for all the maritime professionals in India and abroad uh, regarding a departure of a little bit large size of a container vessel from a port in West Coast India. Yeah, this is uh, OOCL Hamburg. Uh, she is departing at a draft of uh, maximum 11.85. Uh, she is 322.9 uh, meters long with a beam of 42.8. Uh, she can carry around 8064 containers, long haul vessel. So now in this port we will be turning about to starboard. So for the preparation of this uh, we have seen the wind, uh, the current uh, the, is still ebbing. So Agdis of the vessel here, uh, coming from GRC, uh, pretty good Agdis, and of course the radar is on the uh, up here. It's a, a radar indicator. Then we have the uh, rate of turn indicator in the middle. Then we have the heading indicator, anemometer on the starboard side, inclinometer, then tachometer, and the uh, lateral speed display log on the left side. Then of course we have the uh, echo sounder uh, on the le extreme left side. So a good uh, uh, preview of the forward of the vessel. One thing good about being pilot is that you get always a, a nice coffee and different coffee on the ships that you are working with. Yeah, one of the thing uh, with the uh, the large container vessel is the flare. So it might be possible that uh, the, sh the tug will not be able to push right at the bow of the vessel. So sometimes they are pushing way off from the bow so that you don't get a good uh, turning effect on the vessel. You will not be able to achieve uh, the ROT that you would like to have it. In that case, uh, you need to take precaution uh, in such a way that even the tight catch up then you have a safe way so that you can allow to turn the vessel and you can uh, turn the vessel safely uh, with the tight catching you on. So right now the ROT is almost 20 degrees. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so my estimation was correct. He is moving with 20 uh, degrees. Now the tide has absolutely caught her on board on. Disembarking from the ship after pilotage to the pilot board. Here, this one. Because of this here, yeah. because it's a hazard for the pilotage, no? Yes. When you are kind of disembarking. Yes. Fine. Let's be careful and then. The hatch size is pretty small, quite a small hatch size, especially with the bag with rain cord inside, with some additional uh, radio equipment, and sometimes a booklet, sometimes tight table. Yeah, it can become a little bit challenging. Coming down. So safely back to the pilot boat. Yeah, good evening, Namaste and Jai Hind. Uh, this is Captain Feroz Pasha along with Captain Ramesh Purla. Uh, we just uh, had a small uh, departure of maneuvering in our port with OCL Hamburg. She is 322 meter vessel, vessel. and uh, Captain Gorlapu was the lead pilot and he was doing the departure moment. So I would like to ask a few questions to Captain Ramesh. Uh, Captain, uh, maybe you can explain uh, for this educational information video for all the university students and young officers, third mate, second mate, even up to the mate level. Some tips to the master regarding the uh, moments, uh, the harbor moments in the pilot. So I am Captain Ramesh, as you said. I have been doing pilotage for the last almost 10 years. And uh, here in this port, I am working for the last almost 4 years. This place uh, is on the west coast of India. And at this time of the year, we have uh, a good monsoon and winds blowing onto our port. So, coming to this moment of uh, the first part was master pilot exchange. Yes. 
while it's also uh, watching us um, that what could be the limitation uh, of a typical container vessel when it comes to propulsion now uh, the first part we start off with uh, how much time the master will take to give the first kick there are some vessels they they even take about 40 to 50 seconds okay. to initiate the first kick okay. because of the design of the vessel and uh, other than that some vessels they have phenomenally high speed on the very first kick that is on the dead slow end. Okay. They, uh, I have seen uh, when ported vessels having a dead slow speed of almost 9 knots. 9 knots. So we, we do discuss what is the minimum RPM the master can give yeah. because it is it is possible that uh, sometimes yeah. though the dead slow is marked on the, on the maneuvering yes. data yes. but at the same time we will have a small clause that the vessel's minimum RPM is lesser than the dead slow speed. Correct. So this is an important factor. Secondly, uh, do discuss about the rudder uh, availability. Yeah. Is the vessel able to give you all the way up to 35 degrees? Yes. There are some special uh, only designed uh, uh, rudders. Yeah. Uh, like the Becker rudder or the yeah. Shilling rudder. Yeah. If as a pilot, as a bridge team, you have those resources available, yeah. they really help you a lot yeah. while turning the vessel or turning it. Yes. Yep. Uh, yesterday we just uh, did a moment and there was some limitation with the uh, the bow thruster of the Yes. The tug which is going to be made fast, where she is going to push, the yes. other tug which is going to come 
versa. We can have a digital display somewhere in the tug boards and whatever we are speaking, the master can also hear. So he has a good estimation and uh, understanding that what we talk and what we agreed upon. Uh, as we have been discussing in the days to come, yeah. there will be situations when uh, remote pilotage will be carried out. Right. And at that time, it will, it will happen over the time. Yeah. At that time, these things, these yeah. technological changes, yes. procedural changes will do come in. Fine. Captain, what will be your tip and advice to the duty officer which are in the forward and the aft of the vessel when they are tying the tug and when they are releasing the tug? Uh, good communication. And remember that you are the person in charge on the bow and the stern. You are the eye of the master and the pilot who is operating on the bridge. So the communication part has to be fluent, not too much, yeah. but has to be accurate, fluent. Any issues you come across, yes. do report about them. There is an issue, things can always be worked out. What would be your tip when they are releasing the lines, when, especially when we are using the ASD tugs or the rotor tugs or the tractor tugs? Yeah. Now, uh, most of the ports, especially in other ports on West India and on East India, they have current. So the undercurrent, when you are releasing your tugs line, if you are just releasing it in a free flow, there is a high chance that the tugs line, which is a long line, Sometimes it could be 60, 70 meters. Along with that, there is a passenger line yeah. for the ease of operation. Yeah. There's a possibility that because of the current and the wind flow, these lines can get into the rotors of the tugs, the propellers of the tug. So, and not only that, it's always a good practice to let go these lines slowly. Keep a good communication with the bridge team. The pilots, they ensure that the tugs are also told not to start winching the lines as soon as they have been told to cast off. Correct. So, yes. Fine. So, uh, thank you very much for giving all this information from your practical experience and your expertise there. And uh, I wish you good, good uh, luck and always safe pilotage. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.